Good morning, Greater Latrobe. From the WCATTV studio, I'm your host, Ramaya Henderson. Attention seniors, the yearbook staff is looking for old photos for the then and now section of the yearbook. If you have any old photos to represent the then section of you and your friends or small groups of people from your pre-elementary or elementary years of school, please email or bring them to Mrs. Butler ASAP. The yearbook staff will create the now version of these photos. Anyone trying out for the baseball team this year, there will be a mandatory meeting on Friday, March 4th at 3 o'clock in C-106. You must attend the meeting to try out this week of March 7th. Anyone interested in cheerleading or mascot, mascot tryouts must attend a mandatory tryout meeting on Wednesday, March 9th at 7 p.m. in the CSC. Please bring a copy of your report card. If you have any questions, you can contact Mrs. Fry in A4 in the junior high. You go to Jane Alisi for the three-day forecast. Good morning, Wildcats. Today, we're going to see some partly cloudy skies with a high of 52 and a low of 31. Tomorrow, we're going to see a severe dip in temperatures with a high of 36 and a low of 19. On Friday, we're going to see cloudy skies with a high of 42 and a low of 32. That's the three-day forecast. Back to you. Thanks, Jaden. Club photos will be taken on Monday, March 7th in the main gym. The schedule has been set to all faculty. Club advisors should be notified members of their scheduled time. Please arrive, arrive promptly. Mualpha Theta will be hosting Pi Day in the CSC all day on March 14th, except during Lunch and Learn 1. You will be able to participate in a free hand circle contest, a board game, origami with Mr. Ludwig, a pie mural, a hula hoop contest, take a selfie with Einstein, a competition for memorizing the numbers of pi, a paper airplane competition, and voting for a teacher to be pied in the face. Bring $1 to Pi Day to vote on the teacher of your choosing to get pied in the face. The following 12 teachers are in the running. Mr. Brandt, Mrs. Butler, Ms. Eckerd, Mr. Evans, Mr. Glamp, Ms. Cubis, Mr. Marker, Mr. Savakis, Mr. Sheridan, Mr. Snyder, Mr. Trenton, and Ms. Singus. Stop by and join in the fun. Wondering what's on the menu today? Here's Emma Santoro with What's Cooking. What's cooking, Latrobe? It's Wednesday, March 2nd, and cooking up in the main line are fish nuggets, cheesy au gratin potatoes, a dinner roll with butter and peas. In the sandwich line, there are hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and chicken patties. In the pizza line, there are homemade cheese and pepperoni pizzas and Bosco cheese sticks. In the salad bar, there are fresh salads and deli hoagies. The soup of the day is potato. That's what's cooking, thanks, and back to you. Thanks, Emma. We'll be back after this commercial break. The spring musical, Bye Bye Birdie, will hit the stage on March 4th through the 6th. The show follows the story of Albert Peterson, a panicky songwriter caught between his music career, forgotten dream of teaching, and his love for a special someone as his company's top performer, an Elvis-like singer by the name of Conrad Birdie, is drafted into the military. Colorful and lively, the Bye Bye Birdie captures the rising teen culture and the parental opposition to it in the American 1950s. Show times are 7.30 on Friday and Saturday and 2 o'clock on Sunday. Student tickets are available for $10 at latrobedramaclub.com. We now go to Ben Hammony for the sports report. What's up, Wildcats? Here's your national sports report. In the NBA, there will be an array of games. At 8 p.m., the Heat will head to Milwaukee to play the Bucks. Then, at 10 p.m., the Suns will host the Trailblazers. Over to the NHL, there will be several games on the ice. At 7 p.m., your Pittsburgh Penguins will head to Tampa Bay to play the Lightning after the team had a three-day break. On Sunday, Sidney Crosby scored his 73rd game-winning goal to put out a key win against the Blue Jackets to tie Mario Lemieux for third in game-winning goals in Penguins history. It's all for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Ben. Do you want to work somewhere fun in the center of everything? HB Leisure is the world's leading attraction partner for skilled games and amusements across the globe. They are currently looking for game operators to work at Idlewild. The pay is $13 per hour. See Ms. Hager in the guidance office for details. The deadline to apply is March 16th. Seton Hill will be at the senior high on Monday, April 11th for an instant decision day during Lunch and Learn. We now go to reporter Abby Williams, who goes behind the scenes of Latrobe's yearbook production. 
Remember all of those signatures everyone tries to get into their yearbook by the end of the year? Well, the, these books aren't created without hard work and dedication by the yearbook staff. I'm here in the yearbook room where all of the production happens. A lot of editing, creativity, and time goes into creating one yearbook. Each year, a new group of students has the chance to expand their creativity and leave their mark in the history books. Editors picking the theme, and then we talk with the staff to discuss all of the details. And then we assign deadlines, make adjustments, and print. This year, the yearbook staff includes a total of 26 students. Since we have a bigger staff this year, we've been able to put more creative elements in the book. I keep it original and not use things that have been done in the past yearbooks. Making sure deadlines are met, pages are correct, and students are happy with the pages for this book can often be tricky. This year we've had some issues meeting the deadlines on time. And taking on a bigger staff this year definitely has been a challenge. Our top priority has been meeting deadlines and making sure small mistakes don't slip through the cracks. The students begin their book the second day of class and need to make sure they get it completed by April for the print process in May. Throughout this time, they keep their eyes open for the little errors that may occur. The staff feels the pressure and high expectations of capturing and preserving each year's memories. Expectations every year for our staff and for the book. Uh, one of the biggest challenges this year, as far as keeping those expectations high, is almost meeting the expectations of the student body and coming up with a book that is uh, creative, unique, ones or one that hasn't uh, you know been duplicated in previous years uh, and also coming up with a theme that really hasn't been used in previous years. I think to add on to that too coming off of a year where um, the cover last year was something different than anything that's ever been done here was a challenge for our editors but I think um, they have some great ideas that we're working on and carrying through this year's book, so hopefully um, we'll exceed those expectations. Students who are interested in being part of a publication that they'll be able to look back on, you know, uh, 20, 30 years down the road um, is something to be uh, really excited about. I think um, this class is unique um, because we can meet a lot of the different interests of students um, or that students might have uh, such as photography, writing, um, design, graphic design elements, uh, working in teams, um, or even just uh, for students that might not necessarily have strengths in those areas who are interested in developing um, a skill set in those, those areas. Number one, to work with Mrs. Butler. Um, and then also just to kind of see how all of the students develop. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in this class would be taking so many different people and um, you know bringing them together. You know, in a, in a typical class, you pretty much just work for your own grade. Whereas in this class, you need to rely on other people to get the job done. Uh, so when we have so many different abilities and ability levels, skill levels to bring everyone together to work as one cohesive staff is challenging but yet in the end very re rewarding. Yes. The staff is continuing to put in tremendous amounts of work into this year's yearbook. They eagerly await the final pr production as it feels like Christmas morning when it is all complete. Reporting from WCAT TV, I'm Abby Williams. Now here's Ariel Tepper with Wildcat World News. Good morning, Latrobe. Today in Wildcat World News, two American professional basketball players, Teray Murray, a former member of the New York Knicks, and Maurice Mokreek, found themselves caught up in the Russian invasion of Ukraine. One player managed to escape while the other is still stranded in the war zone. Next up, the U.S. deployed six F-35 fighter jets from Germany to the Baltic Sea and Black Sea regions to bolster NATO's eastern flank. The U.S. Air Force F-35 Lightning II aircraft will be supporting NATO's enhanced air policy missions out of Estonia, Lithuania, and Romania. Lastly, Miley Suduknik, a 10-year tutor, is teaching indigenous languages to fellow students over the Internet. She does not want these languages to be lost due to our ever-changing culture. That is all for Wildcat World News. Back to you, Ramaya. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of WCAT-TV News. Have a great day, Latrobe.